Today we're making a Game of Thrones mead. This is a pomegranate mead inspired by the mother of dragons herself, Daenerys Stormborn. So this mead is a pomegranate mead that's kind of um, reflecting on the time in Game of Thrones where Danny eats the horse heart, if you haven't seen that. And this uh, mead is inspired from a recipe I found on alehorn.com. I'll make sure and link them down below. Thank you to them for providing this recipe. This is not my original recipe. I want to make sure and say that. I'm just creating it for you guys. So it's a pomegranate mead and uh, the recipe is right here. Basically, we're going to be making uh, the recipe I'm listing is a little bit different than the one that they put on the website because I want mine to equal one gallon. We're gonna have uh, about two and a half pounds of honey, which I'm using orange blossom honey, uh, two thirds of a gallon of water, a, this is basically a third of a gallon of uh, pomegranate juice, which is our course of juice base we have there. Then I'm using the Lavin EC1118 for my yeast. You also are needing some different things like some teas. So um, I'm using red tea and I'm also using uh, black tea in this. Two bags of red tea, one bag of black tea. And the weird one that's in here is Irish moss, which Irish, Irish moss is often used for beer making um, in a clarifying kind of fashion at the end of a beer. So it does have a flavor, it's just more earthy, kind of different. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I have sanitized everything. I use Starsan, which is a brewer's grade sanitizer. We're gonna be fermenting in this bucket so that we can put more than one gallon in to our primary because this is what we will be aging in, which is exactly one gallon. If you make more mead than you um, are gonna put into ultimately, well, I'll say this. If you make like 1.2 gallons of mead, you'll probably end up with one gallon after sediment. Anyways, step one, this, this brewing process is pretty easy. I'm gonna mix my two thirds of a gallon of water, my third of a gallon of pomegranate juice, and into a pot that has been sanitized. Get that to boiling. Then I'm going to take the teas that I have. When that is bo has boiled for 15 minutes, I will boil the teas in there for five minutes, and then we will basically let that ferment um, once it cools down. So I'm gonna mix everything in at that same time and boil it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and mix everything into my pot. This is a three gallon, I believe, pot. So it'll be plenty enough for us to boil in. I'm gonna put all of my ingredients in um, and here we go. All right, a couple important things. First of all, always sanitize everything you use to brew because bad bacteria or bacteria in general can take over something if it has not been sanitized. That ruins your brew. Number two, when you're, uh, if you're gonna make this, if you get pomegranate juice, which you need for the recipe, make sure it is, uh, does not have any stabilizers, stabilizer in it, like potassium sorbate, um, because that is, something that is used to halt fermentation, therefore trying something that's used to keep yeast from fermenting. So you want something that has no potassium sorbate in it. Now I've mixed everything all together. I will go ahead and put my Irish moss in as well. And let's go ahead and boil this thing, get it up to boiling for 15 minutes. Now I need to let this set and cool for about, uh, it's gonna take a while, but down to 70 to 80 degrees because that's the temperature we need to pitch our yeast that we will use. Okay, I've gone ahead and moved it out of the pot it was in. It has cooled down to 85 degrees now. About 10 minutes ago, I took and put some water into a glass like this and put my yeast I'm gonna use, which was uh, our two grams of the Lavin EC1118, and I put them straight in. The reason I have done that is because this allows them to rehydrate, which allows them to actually ferment a little more efficiently. So you can just sprinkle your yeast on top and call it a day, but I wanted to help them out a little bit. So now that this is at the correct temperature, we can go and put these yeast in, and basically I'm just gonna pour them straight in. The reason we want them, we wanted this to cool down is because if it was too hot, it would kill the yeast and then it wouldn't start fermenting. 
So there's our yeast. Now we have everything done. This thing is ready for primary fermentation, which is where the bulk of all fermentation happens with mead making, beer, wine, all of those things. So I'll put my lid on. I have my airlock, which goes into this bucket and I'll put a temporary label on just so I know what this is because I have a lot of stuff going on behind me and we will let it completely finish fermenting and then we'll do a taste test. So let me go ahead and jump now to after the primary fermentation. Well, wait a minute. I almost forgot something super important. We need to now take a gravity reading to know how alcoholic this thing is gonna be. I need two things, my hydrometer, which is this thing floating in here, and something to put the hydrometer in as long as it's tall enough to where it floats. So uh, I put my hydrometer into this thing and let's figure out just how uh, high the gravity is for it. Okay, we're obstructed by a few bubbles here, but you can see that the hydrometer is floating there. So the bubbles are up to the uh, 90 or 0 0.09 and this thing is setting at, can't really see on the camera. So you can't really see on the camera underneath there, but basically this thing is at 1.095. With this being at 1.095 gravity, that leads us to be uh, roughly about, I believe a 12 and a half percent. I'll make sure and put it on the screen here. But uh, the Lauvin EC1118 yeast, which is a champagne yeast, meaning that it is normally used for high gravity things, goes up to 18%. This should um, ferment completely through all of that gravity because the yeast have um, the capability to eat all those sugars. Now there might be some sugars within this that are not fermentable, meaning that we're left with some sweetness, but I guess we'll find out after the primary. So I'm gonna pour this back in here. Again, we have our yeast, everything going, and we will see where it lands after the primary. And we're back with Danny's pomegranate mead. This thing has finished fermenting. It took roughly about uh, 15 days to finish fermenting from start to finish. And I know it's finished because I, I can look at my uh, hydrometer and take a gravity reading. So I'll show you that. All right, so floating my hydrometer in here, like you can see, I um, can kind of get close. You can see that my actual, um, like where it's floating is now 1.000, which means that it is completely fermented out. So now that this has finished fermenting, um, we're gonna go ahead and move it into this glass carboy, which is sanitized. I've got everything else sanitized for my moving process. Let me go ahead and move it into this. All right, I have moved it over into this carboy. If you've never racked a mead over, essentially it's taking your auto siphon and tubing and moving, literally just moving from one container to another. You notice at the bottom of this, I have a bunch of stuff that I don't did not want to get in the secondary, which is what this is in currently. So now that we are finished fermenting, let's see what this thing tastes like. Ooh. It smells, um, has, you know, uh, the, the pomegranate reminds me of like a cherry kind of smell, a little bit of a cherry, um, a little bit of a berry as well, like a, a raspberry smell. Of course, the pomegranate has its own smell too. Yeah, you get a little bit of that tea as well, which is interesting. Some of that, um, the, the black tea that we, we put in, even though it wasn't a lot. All right, let's taste it. Okay, that thing's really good. It's definitely, I'm getting, um, the kind of sour side of the pomegranate, a little bit of sweetness. Um, the honey that we used was that orange blossom honey. So it naturally has some floral, but also fruity um, value to it. And the fruitiness is kind of citrusy. So I get a little bit of the citrus uh, notes. Man, in the tea, uh, it's very full, full bodied. Uh, I'll talk about the gravity reading here in a second, but this thing's very, very full bodied, which is nice. Meaning that it, um, it doesn't taste watery. It has some tannic value, some of that mouth pucker, a puckering, mouthfeelish stuff you get um, from maybe like a like a wine. Sometimes they have these the, the tannic value a lot of time, so it's that lingering feeling in your mouth. I'm getting that. It's very very earthy, which I like a lot. I do think the Irish moss. Um, it I like while I tried to scoop it out of the primary afterwards, it. Uh, 
that's what a lot of this uh, ring you see here is, or like around the corners of it. So that's just iris moss and other things. This thing's really, really good. Um, we have some options from here. I could, and I probably will, keep it really close to what we have here. So what I'll do is I'll take and put my airlock on and put a, um, put basically a, another corkish looking thing, which is called a, a bung. And I'll put that in here and write my information down. Let this thing age for a little while longer, and then we'll decide where we want to go for from here. It's still a very young mead. We started this 15 days ago, so I am nowhere, I'm not ready to go ahead and um, you know, like take and bottle it, because I feel like that's too soon. And a good mead has some age on it, generally. <laughs> or most meads, I should say, that are good have some age. Let's talk about that gravity reading. So we started with this thing at 1.095. Our um, final gravity was 1.000. So we should be looking at somewhere around a, we should be somewhere around a 12.3% um, ABV, I believe. I'll put that up here uh, or maybe a little bit more, a little closer. But a this thing's definitely got some, um, body to it because of the alcohol but also the uh, taste as well so again if you want to do this thing it's down the the recipe is in the video but also in the description if you want to make it i'm going to put my airlock on this put it away for probably another couple weeks to give it some good time and then we'll talk about if we want to do anything further um, or if we want to just leave it as is so here's what I did with this. I taste tested it about two weeks later and I realized that it's still pretty tart. It's got some tannic value from the tea, uh, some body. It's got nice things happening that will age well. However, I wanted more sweetness. So I added four ounces of honey, which is roughly about a quarter of a pound of honey. And it was uh, clover honey to be exact. When I added that, it rounded out the body, made it a little more full and nice. The reason I could put this honey in and not worry about uh, any you know, re-fermentation is because I put potassium sorbate in, which is a stabilizer. I know some of you are not a fan of this, but I did. So that's what I did there. And now I'm gonna let it age for the next, uh, not sure how long, and we'll figure out where to go from there. It's time to go ahead and bottle Danny's pomegranate mead. So I have a taste test of it here. And of course, this is a mead that definitely has to be drank out of a Viking horn. So let's taste test it. I love this thing. The, um, my favorite part of it, of course, is the pomegranate juice is very strong. You get the big flavor, but it has a very nice mouthfeel because of the tea. The uh, juice itself provided its own little bit of mouthfeel, but the honey character that pops through those things is really, really nice. It's definitely very floral, very bright, and it complements the uh, pomegranate side. The other thing that's super, super interesting is that it's not super, it's not very, um, it doesn't have a lot of bite and it's pretty young. Uh, this mead, I think right now is, we're at 45 days old maybe. Yeah, we're not, we're at 45 days old. And of course you could let this thing age for longer and longer, but um, it's very, very good. Great balance of tart to sweet because of the honey, pomegranate juice. So yeah, I am super pleased with this. This thing's awesome. If you, you should definitely try to make this recipe. And of course it'll be down in the description. Um, if you want to try it. So I'm gonna go ahead and bottle it. The bottling process is pretty easy. I've sanitized all of my bottles. I have my auto siphon bottling wand. I'm gonna fill everything up, throw my label on, which I'll put on the screen right now. It kind of looks like this. I'm calling this Danny's Pomegranate Mead. I didn't come up with any special name for this, sorry. Um, but that's that. Let me go ahead and do this. All right, that's the end all bottled, complete, and uh, this thing is fantastic. Seriously, if you wanna make a good mead, that recipe right there is awesome. And it's uh, really not too hard to make. Is this the most clear mead in the world? No, you can see it here, really not super clear. But this is also a Game of Thrones mead, and I think in that time, they probably didn't care about clarity. They just wanted it to taste good. So I think that's important. Uh, one quick thing I want to share with you and make sure that you know, I am able to bottle this and be okay with it being bottled because I put the potassium sorbate in, that honey was then added, stabilized everything, and I degassed it. If I did not add the potassium sorbate, um, it would have re-fermented. Re-fermenting causes more CO2, CO2 causes pressure, and 
if it's, if there's too much pressure, some bottles will actually pop. And so we want to avoid that. Any mead you make, make sure you, and uh, make sure to degas it before you bottle. And it's real simple. Stir it up some. You'll see it start to bubble. Um, just make sure that you don't have any issue with bottle bombs. So this has been Danny's Pomegranate Mead. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, I'm going to try and do more of these Game, and Thro Game of Thrones inspired meads in the future. So if you want to see more of those, I have another one. I've done Sansa's Lemon Mead before. And so that one's really good too. And, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please hit like and subscribe. Um, it really helps the channel. And if you also comment something below and, and tell me what you think, I would love to hear whether you like the video, you're like, oh, I didn't really like this, or maybe you just have a question. I would love to chat with you guys because uh, the world of mean making, it needs to grow. And it's only, or it's more fun whenever you guys are part of it. So I hope you uh, have a great day. Go make this mead, go make some meads in general, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.